This is brought to you by the Alumni Association of PISJS. Hey guys, this is the Alumni Association Connect Program's chalkboard, and this will be our very first lecture. And we will start it with talking about some. Yes, let's just take our chalk here, and today we will talk about some units. Now, the kind of system that we all follow is called called the SI unit or the international system of units and this is the most common form of units that we use in science and commerce equally so we will be talking about these and there are other kinds of units as well for example the English unit or the Imperial units or the American system so but we'll just keep them aside and we'll talk about the SI unit first of all you all uh, will be familiar with some of the most common units that we have for example mass the SI unit for mass is kilograms. Now we have another quantity which is distance. The SI unit for distance is meters. If I this is these are the symbols here. These ones are the symbols. And these are the full forms I'm writing here. Kilograms and meters. And uh, after this, let's say speed, that is another quantity. And the symbol for the unit of speed is m divided by s, which stands for meters per second. We'll talk about all of these separately. And the last common one. Oops, I'm sorry. Okay. It's acting up now. So, time. And the unit is symbol is S, and the full form is seconds. So, these are some of the most common SI units that we come across very usually. So let's talk about more the units more specifically. Now there are two kinds of units. First one is the basic unit. And the other one is I'm sorry for the bar, it just can't stop. The second one is the derived unit. Now what is a basic unit and what is a derived unit? Basic unit is basically an independent quantity. It, it's not made up of two uh, units put together that you will see uh, in the derived unit section. Basic unit is just sol solely and independently one single unit. For example, we just talked about mass. Mass is a unit of kilogram time seconds and distance meters so these are single units they are sufficient and they don't need anyone else like the meters for distance you don't need seconds for time you don't need kilogram you can just express it individually but for the derived units, let's take an example for the derived unit. The 
best example for derived unit is speed which we all know is meters per second now as you can see the meter comes from here and the second comes from here so basically a derived unit is formed by combining two basic units let's take another example force the basic unit if, if I just the, ba the SI unit for force is Newton's but if I write it simply and I will explain in the following lectures how we got to this but we can also write it as kilograms time times meters per second square okay so this is the square now you can see that the kilogram comes from here join the line the meter again comes from here the second comes from here so again it's made up of a lot of units so these are this is another example of a derived unit so basically this is the difference between a basic unit and derived unit and with time we will be following and I will be telling you the diff, uh, some of the more common derived units when we get to that but for now I think this would serve as a good example anyway moving on I think we know a lot about units for now as in the basic information but let's see where it comes to the practical use the, the units for example let's talk about why do we need them sorry why do we need them for example I say I have a speed of 19.8 it's just a random figure it doesn't mean anything I have a speed of 19.8 what 19.8 kilograms 19.8 meters 19.8 seconds what so here the meter per second comes to the rescue and so if I only write this you would have an idea that I am talking about the speed of something just because of this little guy here so this is how the units come to the rescue for example if I say uh, let's take a figure 28 what is it? Is it mass or is it time? It could be. Is it distance? Is it um, acceleration? Is it force? Well, I do not know. Why? Because there is no unit. But if I add a unit I say it's 28 newtons this tells me that this is a force and even if I only write 28 newtons anyone knowing a little bit of physics would know that this is force so this is how the units come to the rescue this is why they are important and you will see that in your IGCSEs or A levels these are of vital importance for you okay let's move on to some unit making unit formation what is unit formation if I say speed has a unit of meters per second it's not like it's just there from the beginning of the time no it was not it was they came out they, the scientists or whoever the guys were they came out with something they came out with a theory they came out with a formula to 
get this and this is very logical you do not have to you know memorize the units there is a logical way out of finding out the units for example most of you would know for the for the beginners I, I think you wouldn't know but most of you would know speed equals distance over time now I'm gonna be twisting the same formula for three times and we'll be finding out the units this requires basic multiplication and division for example now I want to find the unit of speed and I am a layman I do not know the unit of speed so what I do the way to find out that is the unit of speed would be to find the unit of distance what is the unit of distance the unit of distance is meters and distance is, is being divided by time the unit of time is seconds so the unit of speed would be meters divided by seconds which we commonly pronounce as meters per second now let's take the same formula and just a little twist here and there let's see time is calculated by the same formula and this is the formula distance over speed the unit of distance is meters and the unit of speed is meters per second as we have just found out here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide meters since it's dividing here divided by meters per second now we all have learned in this in our basic multiplication that let me just clear this space and we start again from here this was where we left it now we all know that in this situation we can reciprocate what we can do is since it's dividing we can write it like this m times s over m by inverting this we can just put a multiply sign instead of the divide and we can invert this as in this is called reciprocal now if you see this m crosses out with this one and we get a second so the unit of time comes out to be seconds now the same formula for distance distance is equals to speed time this is just I am for example I am telling you about it you don't know about this okay I am telling you about this you don't need to memorize it right now we'll come to this part of physics later on but right now I am telling you about this the unit for speed is meters per second times time the unit for time which is seconds now we know the s crosses with the s when it's multiplying it can happen we are left with an m which is obviously the unit of distance so this is how we form the units now for example let's take another example f times ma i'm giving you this equation you don't know about it as yet even if you do just assume you don't know the unit for force is Newton the unit for mass let's say I am looking for the unit of Newton uh, I'm looking for the unit of force so F is equals to the unit of mass which is kilogram and the unit of acceleration which is meters per second square this is what you would find out later in the course but I'm just telling you right now 
So F, the unit of F would be automatically become kilogram times meter per second square, which we call Newton. And we will find out in our later stages the theory behind this. But this is Newton. So it's that easy. As in unit formation is very easy. You just see a formula, any formula, for example, V is equals to IR, any formula. And you want to find the unit of anything, for example, in this case V, you just make it the subject and multiply or put in the units of the other two, A times ohm. This is the unit of voltage in its basic form. Obviously, this becomes voltage for those who know, but this is how you form the units. And it is that simple. It is very simple. And this is a basic, basic rule about physics. You should know how to form the units for any formula.